So, okay. Yeah. Here is Michelle matchmaking her 13 year old daughter. Just wait till you meet him. Wait till you meet our next guest. You, you're going to want to, you're going to want to duke it out with me. You're dibs, terrible. Dibs on the Dylan. Oh my gosh. We got a little cougar over here. Just wait, wait, is that the right way to use the word cougar? Yeah. No, but you got it right. Cougar. Cause you have crushes on young. Cause I'm old. I'm 40. I'm the cougar. You're right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not old enough to be a cougar. You're getting there. Boo. No, I'm much younger. Yeah. No. So wait till you meet him. You don't know until you see his mojo. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, and then moving through that, uh, my going into my second year, my summer, I had an internship lined up and COVID happened. It fell through. Um, and I didn't want to spend the mo- like the majority of my summer doing what all my teammates were doing, which is like partying and stuff. I wanted to actually learn some hard skills and uh, flipping furniture wasn't really doing it for me. So I uh, showed up at my dad's store stuff, kind of puppy dog eyes. And I was like, reluctantly, like, can I work for you? And he's like, sure. He had me filing and stuff. And he was looking like, to yeah. ramp up. <laughs> yeah. He's like, all right, get in here. You know, he was probably waiting for it. Uh, but yeah. So he was like, Hey, I'm trying to get the uh, investments, uh, I guess space kind of ramped up. He did a couple of flips. I think he owned a couple of doors at that point. Um, and so he had me take a couple of meetings with a few people. I took what I was learning from those guys and started putting into action. And that kind of turned into me just pulling leads and, and starting a cold call for him. And I did that part-time for him for probably like a year and a half, uh, kind of off and on throughout college while I had a part-time job and was going to school and wrestling. So I was definitely super busy. Did it underneath the bunk bed for quite a while. And then Took me a very long time to get a lead across the finish line and then finally made my first 500 bucks. And I uh, haven't really looked back since. It's been something that's kind of the only thing I've really ever stuck with as far as uh, entrepreneurial age. Love that. So you went from that to having three doors. Why don't we start with that? Are they long-term rental, short-term, mid-term? What's your preference and what are you up to? Yeah, so... I like to, I'm a pretty conservative underwriter. Um, right now, all of these, the doors that we have, we just closed officially on the duplex yesterday. Um, so that marks number three and then our two and three. And then, uh, the other property I bought in January with my dad, uh, we bought that in seller finances are both planning to be long term rentals. Um, I am definitely not opposed to mid term or short term. I just try to underwrite them so that they pencil out as a long term, just in the case that, you know, the other, uh, exits don't really work out. It can always pencil out. So, I think the goal, the long-term rental that we have in seller finance that we bought in January, probably is not going to be a good short-term or mid-term rental just because the area it's in, but the duplex is definitely some uh, the advantages there. So I think the, uh, the goal would be to improve the property that we have in, in Fresno that we bought in seller finance, turn the detached garage into an ADU, maybe get some more cash flow out of it and just kind of hold it. We got really good debt on it because we were able to structure both jobs, so we'll, we'll hold that for a while. That's awesome. So let's just be clear. How long specifically have you been in real estate? So I've been dipping my toes in the water since uh, 2020, um, but I didn't know anything about real estate really, aside from just how to talk to sellers. Um, and then I've been full-time since I graduated in June of 22. So I've been kind of, I was doing apartments and stuff for another guy for a little while, going back with my dad in October, and then I've been hitting the floors ever since. So I've been full-time for a little over a year and a half. Wow. Impressive. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Are you are you helping clients buy and sell as well, or are you focusing on purchases and deals with your family or for your family? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So I focus most of my time on the investment side. Um, I, what I really do is I like to say that I hunt for motivated sellers. So uh, and then find the right exit for them. Sometimes it's us selling the property. Sometimes um, it's us buying the property, or sometimes it's just us like helping their tenants out to be able to purchase them. Um, so that's primarily what I do. If I get a couple offshore people that want to buy and sell, um, I'm definitely more than happy to do that. Most of my time is spent doing cold outreach. So uh, I'm talking about, I'm forcing a lot of conversations about real estate with people that I don't know. Uh, and so that's traditionally what I do, but I'm through my social and stuff, you get deals here and there. And so I'm always happy to help you out. That's, that's primarily what I try to do with all of the content and stuff that I do. Like I take, a lot of calls and, and a lot of meetings and stuff because so many people have poured into me. Not everyone is given the opportunity that I was blessed into with, with having a good hand as far as my dad being in real estate, my grandpa being in real estate. I've been able to shortcut a lot of the path that I feel like traditionally people aren't able to do. So I think it would be very selfish for me not to share the lessons and things I learned along the way. So that's what I kind of try to do. Which I've heard you share all of this information on your social. You're very, very generous with um, sharing the calls that you make, what it sounds like, what you say specifically. Um, yeah. you're like really generous. Why is that? Why are you sharing your secret sauce with everybody? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know if I've given it much thought. Uh, I don't know. I just think that people have been very generous to me, um, coming up in the business. I've always, uh, for a lot of my friends and stuff, even before like real estate, like I was always the guy that they'd come to for advice and stuff. And I just really like to help people. And, uh, 
it probably comes from some deep inadequacy of myself that I just love helping people. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just get a lot of, I get a lot of value out of it. And I think, you know, making money is cool, but it's a lot cooler to help connect the dots for people and help people grow or get a message here and there. And people say like, Hey, I did the thing that you said and you know, it worked out like that to me, fires me up more than any money I could ever make. So. Well, can you give us an example of what you say? I would. Uh, yeah. Say, right? Yeah. As far as like, uh, like on the phones or like, as far as like, uh, um, yeah, I mean the, a lot of times when people, the, the first advice I always give to people is they always want to know the right thing to say when they're on the phone. Um, I think, that that's great. And I think having a script in front of you is good to have a format. But what I always encourage people first is to, Hey, I'll give you a script and then just make your first three, 400 calls before you ask me any advice. Because a lot of times you're going to learn that no matter how much you practice, no matter like what you're, you're going to be going into hurdles. And I think it's better to just do the thing and to get real time feedback and then come back and then say, Hey, like this is an objection I'm getting. How do I overcome that? But you'll, you'll learn so much more because really what you need to have on the, on the phone in particular is confidence um, and resilience. And so um, that's like the, depending on the level of the investor, like that's the, I feel like very actionable advice as opposed to me trying to like role play a bunch. Uh -huh. Now, the second piece of that with role playing is, is a lot of it is just like mirroring what, what the person's saying. So I do a lot of sales calls to motivated sellers um, or what I think would be a motivated seller. And so they'll say things like, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to be a landlord anymore. You know, everything that has happened in my family and what I do is I always kind of do a mirror. And then what that looks like is like, you know, everything that's happened in my family is the reason why I'm kind of considering selling. Or, oh, everything that's happened in your family. And then it's just active listening. It feels very weird to say that. But what most people do is when you mirror the things that they say, usually the last few words, they'll usually unravel the things that are actually happening, which gives you a better all encompassing idea of what, the, re the black swan, right? What, why they're actually willing to sell. And then you can then turn that motivation back into the offer that you're making later on. I mean, it sounds like, and I always repeat back the motivation as I say, it sounds like, you know, the reason you want to sell is to X, Y, and Z. Now we can definitely help you with that. And you sound like a really nice person. And I would love to be the one to help you solve this problem. I'm not even sure if we're a good fit yet, but um, and that, that's kind of traditionally how I'll kind of go about that. I can tell you've read Chris Voss, Never Split the Difference. Yeah. I'm a huge I love Chris. Fan. I've read that book. Yeah. 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 It's a really, really good one. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the biggest things in, in, in that book I, that I like the most is like the labeling um, and mirroring. I think that anybody can really do those things. The other stuff is like kind of more advanced stuff and is a little bit hard. And I, uh, I've read that book like twice. I, I'm a big believer in Chris Voss. hundred <laughs> percent. So would you say that you do wholesaling? Am I using the correct terminology when you're reaching out to investors? Because I'm not super savvy on that, but I really want to learn. Yeah. Uh, so I do, I do, like I said, I, I hunt for motivated sellers. So it all depends on what the homeowner is looking for and what we can provide to them. So if they need a super short close date and they need to sell like yesterday um, and they're willing to take a little bit of a discount, I always, because I'm a licensed real estate agent too, I inherently carry a lot more responsibility with that. So I never try to take advantage of sellers or anything like that. I want to educate them like, Hey, you're going to make more money in the open market. Um, if you want to be done, I mean, the property is not financeable, so you still are going to make more money, but if you'd rather just be done and sell quick, this is kind of the options that we have now, depending on our buy price and where we get it, we'll determine whether or not we can do a flip, a wholesale, uh, maybe a wholesale where you just buy it and then put it back on the market, not doing anything. Um, or if we upgrade them to the bank and do some type of seller financing or we do a buy and hold, it all depends on what their goal is and then where we can buy it at. If we buy it at a deep enough discount, it gives us other options to maybe sell the contract to another investor that might be willing to do it for smaller margins, or we'll just take it on ourselves and flip it. Very cool. What was that verbiage you said? Whole, whole, whole tail? Whole tail. Yeah. I, I was like, uh, I was looking at Courtney, like, is that, do you know what that is? That's yeah. Cool. So it's slang. essentially, yeah. So it is a little bit of investor slang. So it's essentially you're combining wholesale and retail. So you buy the property and then you close in two weeks, but you actually physically close on the property and then you just put it back on the market, not doing anything because you bought it at such a deep enough discount. And then usually you can make a little bit more because you're selling to a, a different type of investor that's looking for a property like that. I told you. Right? Great. I mean, great. Would it be like, okay, if I asked how old you are? Like really yeah, I, I just turned uh I just turned twenty-four. Oh. You're so <laughs> cute. 
I'm just saying. I appreciate like, it. I'm, I'm not trying to say I have a crush on you or anything. I'm, I mean, I'm obviously <laughs> married, but 24, and, well, just super impressive. Yes. Look I appreciate it. it. I Thank mean, you. Yeah, I, I will. I will say. Well, yeah. Sorry. No, no. I was just going to say I appreciate you saying that. I would be remiss to say that I, I've been very blessed to have a lot of really good mentors in my life that have shortcutted a lot of the path and I've learned a lot of their lessons without a lot of the stars. And so I've been very privileged and honored to have shared a lot of conversations with, that's helped shortcut a lot of my path. So I wish I could take credit for it, but it's definitely, um, you know, it's all been a team effort for sure. Well, I have had some great conversations with your dad and I know that he also is very knowledgeable. So I think you guys are like the dynamic duo right now. <laughs> yeah he's good he's definitely a good mentor we we butt heads a lot because we're father and son but uh we, we got a little bit of a good thing going and it's, it's definitely uh it's definitely been cool to see because it's different you know now that we're business partners and stuff too you know it's like we have to kind of it's hard to kind of take off the hats of father and son and then like be business partners too so it kind of just meshes all together but it's he's definitely been a really good mentor for me yeah we have that partnership mother daughter it's it's hard <laughs> Since she's much older than I am, I'll say that. <laughs> Just kidding. Dylan, have my back on this one. I don't look old enough to be her mother, right? No, absolutely not. You guys you guys look just a hair over 25. That's what we thought. You can stay. Thank you. You're on every week. You just, you just bought yourself a couple of minutes. I love it. <laughs> so you've raised $1.5 million in private money in eight months. Yeah. Let's hear about that. Yeah. So, I mean, whenever you, so there's a, there's a, like an old saying that's kind of been real estate that I've heard from a few mentors. And then once you find the deal, the money is easy to find. And now that sounds like the cliche quote that you see in, in houses, which is like live, laugh, love. No, no one really unpacks that. And it seems like uh, it's almost too good to be true. And, it, and to me, I even felt it myself because it's limiting belief. It's like, okay, that sounds good for you. But how does that even work? Like, I don't have the access to people that have money. Like, I don't understand what, no, who's going to trust me with their money. I'm, you know, early 20s. So that being said, um, whenever you buy a deal, you either you use it, you have to have money. So it's either your money, it's either hard money, or it's somebody else's money. And so we traditionally, this is what my dad had previously done, is just go and either use his own money or do hard money. Now, the problem with hard money, it's very good because it works for people and you can do deals. But they are very... Um, aggressive in their in their uh, interest and they're also very mindful of like rehab so you have to front the rehab then they pay you back and so there's a lot of it just delays the process a little bit um, and i've been hearing this thing over and over again from the mentors that um, i had paid to be a part of the programs and stuff like hey we got to do private money we got to do private money so i just started being active about hey we're paying all this interest to other people uh, i'd rather pay interest to people that i know i can trust and make my friends money uh and we just started putting it out there and uh I think we started we started with our very first seventy thousand that we borrowed from someone in July of twenty twenty three, and uh, since then we've uh, we've kind of rinsed and repeated, and then have raised for various projects that we've done. We raised one point five million dollars, and now I know that sounds like I've made one point five million dollars, but I definitely have not. Uh, but we, you know, we'll we'll buy a property for say two three hundred grand. We borrow one hundred grand for the rehab. We resell it for a profit, and so. Uh, yeah, I, I was calculating the other day. I think we made our real estate partners from people that have been partnered up with us on deals or have invested in our deals. We made our partners about 150 grand in the last six months, which has been pretty cool. That's awesome. Impressive. I know you guys think you're going to syndicate at some point or? <laughs> you know, it's definitely, I mean, I think the, the area in which I want to become really good at what we're doing currently. Um, and for me, I don't think syndication would is out of the question. I think more so what I would like to do is like be able to understand how to. So right now we're, we're getting really good at the debt side, which is raising money as as debt partners, right? So we pay them interest to borrow the money. So we're getting good at that. What I would like to then transition to is probably something like a syndicate, where instead of raising like a, from a bunch of people and then giving them all into the deal, like just getting, um, you know, say we get a seller finance deal that's like an eight unit and we need. 150 grand to, to put down, bringing them in as equity partners. So we're not paying them interest. We're just giving them a, a return, you know, in terms of cash flow and equity and stuff. So I think that's probably the direction that I would like to go eventually. But in the meantime, just getting really good at the fix it flip side and kind of the small, you know, pickups here and there. And then once I feel like I can understand the structure, then I'll start going after the bigger tuna. Well, what I love about this is that you're doing this in California and we get a lot of slack. We go to conferences, we meet people in other states and the word on the street is that 
these kind of opportunities don't exist in California due to our price points. Yeah. It looks like you're proving everybody wrong. Yeah. I mean, I think at the end of the day with like media and like certain things, like I'm, you have to be very mindful of like what you're listening to and putting in your brain because it, it can, like it, it basically just puts limiting beliefs on yourself. But I think if you're really focused on, I don't give a quick example, if you're really focused on like something long enough, you're going to find the opportunity where most people won't. And the reason I bring that up is uh, my dad's really big in the law of attraction. And there's, uh, I don't know why he likes yellow Corvette. I'm not a car guy personally, but he loves yellow Corvette. He put on a vision board a long time ago. Every time he's, uh, he sees a yellow Corvette before anyone else, because that's where the tension goes. That's what he's looking for. And so the reason I'm bringing that up is I think there's a lot to be said about when you're looking for opportunity, you find it when other, when other people don't see it. And if you know you're looking for what you're specifically looking for, you'll know what it looks like when it's in front of you. You know, and, and the same thing goes for like relationships and stuff. If you're looking for a specific partner and and you are very mindful about the person that you're trying to attract and you're trying to to be a part of, you know what it doesn't look like and you definitely know what it does look like when it's in front of you. So uh, yeah, I, there's definitely opportunities out there. I think the better that we can get about equipping ourselves with the right skill sets and the right tools and how to properly find these deals, I think the better we'll be off. Well, you're in Fresno, Madera market, correct? Central Valley. The Central Valley. Yeah. And where mm -hmm. do you see yourself going? Are you going to go beyond that? Or are you just going to focus right in your immediate market? Yeah, that's an amazing question. Uh, it's something I've been trying to figure out for myself too. So uh, I think for now, where it probably makes the most sense is like to continue to develop the relationships that we have here and get really good and kind of become a really big player in the current market where all our resources are. Um, I think the next step for me I don't plan to stay here forever, like physically. Uh, I see myself, I don't know, maybe back on the coast or doing something like that. But I need to, it's very dependent on my physical presence as being in real estate. So I need to learn how to build the right team around me that I can work a little bit more virtually and then maybe come down, you know, a couple of times a month. But uh, yeah, I think where the, most of our fix and flip stuff will be is like probably from Merced to Clovis for now. Um, and just, just kind of have the active income coming in now, as far as like doing other deals, bigger deals, like I definitely not opposed to, uh, out of state markets. And it's something that I've, uh, been very, very fond of and want to do. I just want to understand how to just keep getting good at what we're doing. And then what I'll like to do is use the private money that we're learning on how to raise and then park it into offshore investments where maybe the price points are a little bit lower. So it's a little bit easier to cash flow and it's a little bit more landlord friendly. But for right now, my dad's a big believer in investing in your backyard. So I'll get good here and then we'll kind of see what that brings us later in the future. There's no doubt you're going to make all of those things happen 100%. <laughs> and I know we're, we're kind of running out of time, but I have so many questions. You spoke about your team. How many people do you have on your team right now? Yeah. Well, as far as what my dad and I do, there's just three of us. So uh, it's myself and him. Uh, and then we have a cold color underneath us. Uh, she works in the Philippines. Uh, she does like a lot of like our administrative work. And then uh, like she cold calls a lot for us as well. Uh, that's all we have as far as it, like the investment team. Now, us at Miracle Real Estate, we have probably 15 or 16 employees. Uh, I'm not, I can't say we because that's my dad's business. That's, I just kind of help out and help train and stuff. But uh, we have a property management team, two ladies in the front. Um, one of them is my stepmom. And then uh, we have about 13 agents, about seven of those are full time. Well, I see you in a leadership role for sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> it's just, I, I can't say enough about how much you probably admire, um, people, people admire you out there on social media. You're just a shining example of what's possible. So I just want to, you know, encourage you to keep it up and it's Thank amazing you. to watch and be a part of. So very impressive. You're doing a great I, job. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, seriously, it means a lot. I, I struggle. I struggle with it because I've always been the guy that's like looked up to everyone. And now I, I help out with a couple of coaching programs that I pay to be a part of. And now I help coach for like some beginner investors on the phones. And it's weird going to some meetups and stuff and people kind of looking up to me in some way, because I still don't feel like an expert uh, and still trying to, as someone that's trying to figure it out. And so it feels very weird to like be recognized in a certain, like, cause I still see myself as a guy that's trying to learn. And so it, I have a lot of imposter syndrome. So I think a lot you, uh, you guys saying that. Well, I think in real estate that anyone that's good or that loves the real estate market and industry, 
it's someone that's curious that wants to keep learning. So we're never going to be an expert in our own minds because there's always something new to learn when we meet new people like you. Like I learned so much just talking to you today in the last 30 minutes and I've been in the business 20 years. So thank you for that. I'm flattered. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I want to remind our listeners out there if the last 30 minutes weren't a good use of your time, I don't know what could possibly be <laughs> for sure. Uh, what's your handle? Can you, can you say it again? Just so those that are listening, will make sure they get it right. Yeah, it's uh, at Dillionaire321. It's spelled D-Y-L-L-I-O-N-A-I-R-E-3-2-1. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it in the caption. Yeah, we'll put it in the caption. Well, is there anything yeah. else you want to you wanna share with, with the people that are listening? Um, I mean, I think if you're on the, other, on, on the fence and you guys are trying to figure out how to get started in real estate, I think it's really easy to overthink things like you gotta have the right things to say you have to know it all i think uh i've been reminded of the fact over and over again in, in my own personal work that it's great to read books and i think that's awesome but by doing the activities over and over again you're going to learn a hell of a lot more and to compare it to working out like you can read about how to squat all you want but if you're not actually getting time under the bar and squatting you're never going to learn and it would be better that you just start squatting and then read a book while you're squatting and then you realize oh okay i can tweak it here and, and that sort of thing so I think just start and connect yourself with people that like, like you, you ladies that have been in the business for a long time and, and get to learn a lot of lessons about the scars. And I think if you hustle hard enough and you try to bring value always, and you get, you give more than you take, I think it's only a matter of time until you start to see some of the fruits of the labor you've been putting in. I love it. You heard him. Don't wait, do it now. Wow. Making moves in real estate, right? And put the reps in is what I hear you saying. Just put the reps in. Absolutely. And it'll work out. A hundred percent. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time and we will definitely continue yeah. to follow you in social and stay in your world. And maybe we'll uh, talk about investing with you. Yeah, Absolutely. And I, I do want to say, I think it's awesome what you ladies are doing. I'm very honored to be the uh, the seventh guest here on your guys' podcast. I, I hope uh, you guys continue to stay consistent. It's awesome to see your guys' set up. You guys are killing it. Also, you guys are very humble, but I see you guys active on social media too. And I think it's really cool what you guys are building. So uh, I'm very honored to be here. Well, we'll meet you soon in person. That's, that's absolutely. Uh, can we just say that's my goal for the years to meet Dylan Miracle in person? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We'll, we'll make it happen, but set your expectations low. <laughs> Coffee on us. Yeah. We're making that happen for sure. Thanks, Dylan, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, ladies.